first question will be Chris Neves at Noel 247. Hey, Coach Atkins. So, Chris. Not much. What traits about Marie Smith helped him to win that center job? What is it that he does so well that allows you guys to give him such an important role? You know, the good thing about it is we've been able to create competition at that position. You know, um, it's fun to say he's won the job because he's doing a really good job right now, but he got some guys sniffing at the heels. But what Maurice does a good job of is, is really his athletic ability to recover in, 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 in tight situations. He's been doing a good job of that. And also just learning, you know, um, playing offensive line, a lot of people contribute to athleticism, range, all that kind of good stuff, which is awesome. But you got to know how to see the pictures of the game, you know, the alignments, the fronts, playing with balance. You know, it's just like people that drive cars. They drive cars every day, but how many times they back in the trailer? So it, it's hard to do. You got to do it multiple times before you can master it. So it's just building that experience with the time you've had. And that's been the main goal. So he can see the pictures and be able to execute at a high level. Because the more pictures you see, the more confidence you can play with. Hey, Coach, obviously you had mentioned early in camp that you've been impressed with Darius Washington, and you mentioned him as an elite athlete. Can you talk about his development as camp went on? Very similar to Maurice. You know, they both played in some game fashion of a way with a red shirt, so they still have four full years to play. And um, so I, I like his athletic ability just like Maurice's. It's just more seeing the pictures of the game. You know, can he recognize outside pressure? Does he know what to do when that ends spiking? Does he know how many times have he seen it? You know, and that's what builds the confidence to play at an elite level. I've been just impressed with the tools they have to work with. You know, because, you know, at, at O-line, you, I mean, you can watch the Super Bowl. Guys are going to take a bad step. The guys are going to use the hands a couple of times the wrong way. Can you athletically recover in bad instances? Is what I've been impressed with those guys with. Thank you. Kurt Weiler, South Carolina, the Democrats. Hey, Coach. Uh, James, last night on the uh, TV radio show, spoke pretty highly of the offensive line about the, the strides the unit's made. So he's really excited to kind of have the group go out and show the improvement Saturday. What can you speak to about just the general improvements, especially, I would say, since you got them back in June, July to now, just the growth of the unit as a whole? Yeah, every day is a new day. You know, I mean, most likely trying to instill what you did yesterday really doesn't matter. you got to come perform each day. Because just like you said, you can do all this work and improve, it doesn't show, it doesn't matter. You know, so now it's about uh, of, of seizing the opportunity to show what you've done. You know, you can, you can work on something your whole life and then you get that one moment. I think about leverage. You know, you train all the years for one moment. So you have to, especially in football, because you don't get many opportunities. So what I'm excited for is training them how to be in the moment. You know, we, we can have two good practices. If you have three bad reps, that can be critical in the game. So how to maintain that mental focus is the, the concentration when you're playing with guys with limited experience. Hey, Coach. Uh, having been an offensive coordinator and been around other offensive coordinators, what has um, this staff been like in terms of Kenny and Coach Norvell in terms of preparing for a game? Do they do things do, – do different head coaches and coordinators do things differently? Um, what have you seen from them as you guys prepare for an actual game week? Yeah, that was the big reason, of, you know, not only just because it's Florida State, but who it was leading the program and, and the offensive success they've had together. So I came to learn and also, you know, be able to contribute in every way I can. But what I've learned is, is just the details, the fundamentals. Is, that's what surprised you most about these guys. You, you think you're going somewhere where they have this magic book of plays and they're just going to bring it out when the moments come. No, it's really installing the details, the fundamentals the reactions of the game and, and building confidence in your preparation. You know, Coach Walsh around with Sherman says the work is that simple. And a lot of that gets lost in this game. You know, we, we like to hype the magical secret playbook plays with, you know, I've seen some of that stuff, but really it's about hand placement, second step, eyes and reaction to what you see. And, and he does a great job of, of instilling those details. Hey, Coach, I'm curious to get your thoughts on Brady Scott, what kind of value he brings as a reserve, given that he's, I think, started at four positions on the offensive line at this point in his career. Brady can, can he very easily run out as a starter also. You know, he's, he's a very experienced guy. He's played multiple positions. He's um, he's fought through a lot. He's been he's one of the pillars of the program just because he has been through the changes. You know, he's one of the few guys, everybody talks about the coaching changes. He has been there since the start of all of them. So, and he's been on the field. He's played in those moments. He's been in those games. He was in those games on the last drive. He was in those games. So, you you can be excited about it. The, you know, the experience is everything. He brings that, that much needed experience we have to be able to educate those guys. The best thing I've enjoyed about Brady is this, is he is coaching those young guys through those moments. And that's, that's you can't, I mean, that's valuable. 
you know, because, you know, as a coach, you like to think you see everything. But when they're going into those dorms and going to camps and are they still applying themselves, you got to have a set of eyes there that want to succeed and, and want to teach those young guys how to be a college athlete. And, you know, that's, you, know, that, 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 you can't replace that. Hey, Coach, obviously uh, the way we use offensive linemen has changed as offenses have evolved. You see more and more schools rotating uh, offensive linemen into the ball game. In a, in a tightly contested game, what is your ideal rotation as far as number of guys that are going to play? And then how important will it be, for, will it be to get Robert Scott and Thomas Schrader some reps and uh, meaningful snaps? We like to, Coach Novell, and, and you know, we like to have a set plan. We don't like to surprise guys because we like to give them confidence in knowing when they're going to be able to be out there when they're not. So if we were going to rotate, it would be a set deal. Like, hey, the third series, you're going. Hey, the, this series, you're going. And then after that, of course, it'll go by, you know, production and, 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 and the level of play and things like that that does come with value. But I've been, everywhere I've been, I've been able to kind of have a little small rotation between seven guys, which I think has been valuable for us, you know, and, and, and especially early in the, in the season when it's pretty hot. And, just like any other position, you know. So there used to be a time when you just put your five out there and you live and die with it. Some people still, you know, operate in that way. And and, and but I've had a, I've had some success when I've been able to roll a couple of guys here and there. And uh, go back to Kurt from Jeff Brown. Uh, athleticism may not be kind of the first word you think of with offensive linemen, but I would say especially the, the guys you have and kind of that depth chart fit that mold. I guess especially as the game keeps evolving, how important is that trait when you're evaluating your guys? Well, I mean, if you watch the you know, NFL combine, I mean, people line look like they line now. I mean, it's not, they are running, you know, sub, sub five flats. And I mean, it, it, and when you say athleticism, we say that as a coverall term, but it's really the ability to recover. You know, you're going to get in some bad situations. You're going to, you know, be late on a guy crossing your face. You're going to underset a guy he's coming off the edge. Do you have the, the, the God-given ability to recover in bad situations? It's really what we're describing when we talk about it. Coach, just wondering if Bavion sort of volunteered to move to guard or if there was something you saw with him being more uh, suitable to playing guard and just, uh, I guess, how much – more or less responsibility is it when you, you don't have to be the center and is that freeing baby on up to be a, a better player for you guys? Well, no, uh, you try to put your best five out there at any given time, regardless of position. And that's one thing about, you know, coaching a position where you have multiple guys in the field, you got to coach a unit. So, you know, the outside world thinks, I guess, differently. We think of more of the unit of how we got to operate when we're out there together. You know, these are the guys we're going to go out there with regardless of position. We have to work as a unit to defeat what's in front of us, whether it be front alignment pressures and things like that. And how we can we build that cohesiveness? That starts off the field. So I really didn't have to have a volunteer or I'm making you do it. It's, hey, what is the best way for this unit to perform? And how do we defeat what's in front of us? And, and, and where do I need to be to do it? And the more you can instill that mentality, you have a lot more success as a unit than more of, you know, really negotiate, hey, do you feel comfortable? It's more of, hey, what do we need to be successful in this group? And what unit can we put out there that can defeat what's in front of us? Coach Norvell talked about how you guys do so many things in practice to put pressure on players so that there aren't a lot of unexpected things um, on a game day. But but do you still go into a game, first game, kind of wondering what exactly you've got with different guys? Or again, because you guys are going up against such a good defensive front every day in practice, do you feel like you'll you'll know what you have going in? Yeah, you always there's always some you know some optimism going in the first game because they've developed, you know, they've studied and done different things and, and pretty sure incorporated some different things in their defense and changed personnel and, and and so you have to, you know, two things, you're gonna prepare for what you see and what you've seen in the past. But two, you gotta train reaction and that's what you can do the situation of uh, training of, hey, if this retaining crosses his face, what are you going to do? What is going to be your reaction? You will ask linebacker, ask the end. You know, just training those reactions and those quick, sudden movements is as many times as you can. So when you do get something different, their reaction matches what they get. And at least you got some consistency in the reaction when things break down. Hey, if they bring the twist, you've seen this twist, so we're good, but what if they bring another one? Well, hey, it's the same thing with my eyes that my techniques and my fundamentals get me in the right place. So as many times as you can execute them, of course, with some continuity of guys doing it multiple times, as much as you can is the goal. Coach, how's it going? 
So my question is, in a blocking scheme that's very multiple, you switch things up, especially going up against a defensive line in Georgia Tech that's kind of developing and new. How does that multiple blocking scheme help out your guys? Uh, we, you know, we try to put them in the best position possible. You know, you, 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 you do things that they can do and they can execute at a high level. You know, and, and that's what builds that confidence. You know, so when you are changing a blocking scheme or doing something different, you know, they got to know it's for them. You know, hey, I'm doing this for you to be the best possible leverage you can be to get this executed. And that builds that belief and that confidence. So you, you, the scheme is the scheme, but it matches the product you put on the field. And we're trying to put you in the best position we possibly can for you to have success, for you to be glad your hands and feel proud about, you know, the job you're doing. Coach, with offenses wanting to go so fast to catch defenses off guard and – you might not have to be as disciplined or as clean blocking up front when you are going so fast. Has that created sort of bad habits? Have, have offenses psyched themselves out almost by trying to go so fast that maybe coming full circle and, and slowing things down is better for some units to accomplish their objective? Yeah, you see a lot of tempo in college football. You know, we try to instill a deal. We want to play fast, but we don't want to play rushed. You know, you still want to be able to execute at a high level. Uh, I understand what you're asking, saying, you know, hey, have, have techniques and going down the window and just trying to get off the ball, get off the way and things like that. And, you know, we are we don't really do a bunch of that, I wouldn't say. So it's more, you know, executing at a high level and being able to play fast. Now, tempo does give you an advantage. And I like, you know, we would use some of it, but it's more of you, you don't coach it. Like, I don't coach and say, hey, just get on the guy and get set. You know, I'm still coaching the same way whether we're going to high tempo or slow tempo. We still want to execute at a high level. So, it, you know, as a coach or a position coach, I, I don't teach it that way. But um, as a coordinator, I do understand, you know, you can gain some advantages with defenses not being set because they have to be gap sound. So you can create an advantage if they're not gap sound. So it might be ugly, but there's a gap in there because they have not been set and been able to close every gap so it might not look good but there's a gap open so but yeah as a position coach I, you know i want that down block to get down but no matter how fast it's going but as a coordinator i do how to see how you can create advantages by a defense and not being able to cover a gap or cover uncovered receiver all right thank you coach Sounds like Cameron McDonald will be next. 